So just to set the scene a little bit, as you know, over the past couple of months, we've been hosting these sessions where we invite people that are looking for jobs in sales or marketing to jump onto video with leaders from sales and marketing uh, to apply best practices that work in sales or marketing to the job search, right? So for example, yeah. we'll jump in and take a look at your LinkedIn profile, see how we might be able to optimize that, take a look at your LinkedIn activity if you have any. Uh, and if you don't, we can talk about how you might be able to be more active on LinkedIn and use that to get in front of prospective uh, employers um, and kind of everything in between. Galem is, is one of the top voices uh, in sales. Um, she does a lot of work to kind of break through the noise, stand out. Emma, I know that you just recently graduated and you're looking for an entry level role, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, may or may not. In some ways it's easy, some ways it's not, and especially in this market, right? So um, we'd love to hear, I guess, from you, Emma, first, kind of how things are going, where you're at, and then we'll let Galem run the show. Yeah, um, things are not that good. It's been really hard. Um, yeah, so I graduated in May. I had like a couple perspective, um, like internships that I was going to do that were hopefully going to turn into a job. And I had a lot of different like connections who were like, oh, it's easy. Like, we'll help you find a job in marketing. It'll be super easy. And then after the pandemic, they were basically all like, oh, never mind. So, um, and then ever since then, I mean, I've just been like applying for jobs. I've been like reaching out to people. I've been like going on LinkedIn and like different websites and just like applying, but it's all kind of not really turned into anything. So that's been hard. And I, I just, yeah, I'm new to the job search, so I don't really know how to do it in the first place. So, yeah. So Emma, I'm just going to jump right into it. So I heard you say a couple of things that it's a little bit challenging right now for you finding a job and being new in the market, you know, recently graduating. Like I get that I've been where you are, but I haven't been doing what you're doing in a pandemic. So I haven't been in your shoes. I can't pretend that I know what you're going through because I don't. However, what I've heard from other people who have been in your shoes and are still in your shoes is that they've been able to find creative ways to find their roles. I know a couple of people that I'm happy to get you in touch with after this and, and introduce you to, and they can guide you a little bit more in the direction of what have they done specifically to land their roles. And some of the things I've heard them do is on the more creative side of things, because I mean, there are hundreds of people or thousands of people applying for the same jobs. So, you know, just going and, and filling out applications, it's just not going to cut it at this point, right? It might have worked before COVID, but even then, you know, when I was in the, in the job market looking for roles, that was super difficult. And that was before a pandemic, right? Like I, like similar situation as you, but slightly different because I had also graduated from college, but during college, I also worked part-time. So I did have some experience. However, the experience I did have was not related to sales. I was working in HR and recruiting. One can argue that it's, it's similar in recruiting to sales, but really if you're going from you know HR and, and recruiting in one particular field, which was medical device, and then you're going into SaaS for sales, it is different. It's not the same job, right? So I had to figure out like, what are my skills? What is that I'm trying to do here? And what are some creative ways that I can find the right people to connect with and, and get that next role? And so my suggestion to you is just insert yourself. And I know a couple of things that you had come about before was that you're trying to really level up your, your job search. And I know Kevin was focused on how to use LinkedIn to navigate to, uh, to, to gain a, a broader network um, and also how to improve your personal brand. So for me, those two things are extremely important in this process that you're in right now, Emma, because if you have a strong uh, personal network, right, you have a strong personal brand, you are by default going to meet a lot of people who can help you and who you can help as well. So focus on what are the things that you can give other people. And once you start doing that in creative fun ways, especially since you're in marketing, that's super relevant, then you can bring that back home and, and do the same thing yourself. So that's what I would, would suggest there really good to know yeah if you have people who like you know of examples of ways that they did that that would be awesome because i love like creative projects like i'm always trying to like do things like that um anyway but yeah that would be really awesome yeah 
Absolutely. I'm happy to do that. Give you some, some good introductions because those people have been through it just a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, and they found really creative ways to get into big companies. This was in particular for, for sales uh, roles, but I'm sure you can do the same thing and apply the same or similar methods into marketing. Yeah, I see that, um, you know, obviously you have brand strategists, you have creative content developer in your headline. You're also four people away from 500 connections, which will kind of give you that 500 plus, right? Um, so yeah. I, would, I, would, I would definitely suggest connecting with people that are relevant to what it is that you're looking to get into. So create, like um, connect with other creative uh, types, cre uh, content creators, connect with people that are in marketing and, you know, no reason to necessarily like send them a message or ask them for something. I would just connect with them, follow them, kind of watch what they're doing, kind of like what Galem is saying and try to imitate that and, and add your own flavor to it. Yeah. You know, I would, I would love to see like in your featured section, for example, like what are some of the creative things that you have done, right? Are there things right. from school that you maybe have gotten into? I'm sure there are, right? Yeah. Do you have a personal website that you might be maintaining? Um, if not, then start doing that and start being a content creator and you'll start to attract some of those people. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, the thing is, I think that a lot of people can have challenges with is that where do I start? You know, where do I begin on this journey that you're going to embark on? It's, it's not easy. And, and I always suggest like take a step back and think about your purpose of all of this, right? There's one part of it, which you already talked about, Emma, was I'm trying to get a job. And that's great. But what's going to happen when you do get that job? Will you stop focusing on your personal brand? Will you stop focusing on building out your network and having those meaningful connections? Hopefully the answer is no. And if, if it's no, then you're on the right path of continuing on that journey, right? So, so that's what I would say first, like sit down and figure out what's your purpose, what's your mission with this, where are you trying to go with it? Not just to get a job, but beyond that. You know, one thing I did a couple months ago and, and it happens to align perfectly with COVID and which gave me a lot of opportunity to really branch out was I just got promoted and I said, that's great, but what's next, right? What, what else can I do here? Like this journey doesn't stop here. I want to get to the next level. So what can I do to get there? And one of the things I had noticed from just observing on LinkedIn, like I've been there for a couple of years, I have posted things here and there, but it was a different sort of narrative and focus for me before. But then I was in this place a couple of months ago where I just said, well, what if I went a different direction? What if I started to bring my own voice in more? And what if I did, you know, share some of my experiences and highlight other people's experiences and really engage in the network and, you know, knowing what my purpose and reason is to spend this time on LinkedIn. And once I started to figure out that, the next phase was like, oh, I'm a little bit worried. Like, do I really want to tell my opinions or my thoughts and share my feelings and be vulnerable and be honest and be open? And I did, but I was also a little bit scared about that because you just don't know who's going to be on the other end of this, right? And you have this sort of self-doubt of like, is that going to be enough or are people going to judge me? And once I sort of laid all my cards on the table just for myself and figured out, you know what, I do want to do this and I'm doing it for myself and I'm doing it for my career and I'm doing it for my own growth, then it was super easy to just flip that switch internally and say, I'm going to go all in and this is what I'm going to do. And so that's been, that's been super helpful. And then the biggest thing for both of you, Kevin and Emma, is that you need to have some sort of metrics. I think this is more so straightforward for someone who's looking to work in sales because you have those goals, you have the KPIs and, you, and you're sort of trying to make yourself fit into that and, and think the way that a salesperson is thinking. But I also think it's relevant to marketing, right? Because there are marketing teams out there that do have a revenue goal and, and metrics and goals to reach, you know, with their leads and their demand gen and all that stuff. So you can already think in those terms as well and say, what are my goals? What are my metrics here? You have 495 connections right now, actually as of a couple of days ago when I looked, you might have more now, but you can have a metric saying, well, by the end of August, I'm going to have 600 connections. So what am I gonna have to do? So work backwards. Like this is what we do in sales when we get this large revenue goal or whatever. And we have to work backwards and saying, well, 
in order for me to meet this by the end of the year, what do I have to do every quarter? What do I have to do every month? And I go as far as what do I have to do every single day? So you can do, you can apply the same concept to your LinkedIn network, both of you. Like if you know, this is how many I have today. This is what I want to get to. You know, I want to have 5,000 connections by the end of the year. Well, then work backwards. How many do you need to have every month? And how many do you need to send out every week, every day? And then once you do that, your network is going to grow. You're going to have a greater impact on your life. And you're also in return because you're creating the content are going to have greater impact on other people. I do. Um, I, ha- I made like a website over like quarantine, like to try and like do that, like capture my personal brand, I guess. Yeah. But I guess I'm very like timid about it all. Like I, it's like what you said, like, I'm like, I don't want to like, I don't know, just like be weird on there or seem like just like an amateur, I guess. So I just never really know. Like I do create a lot, but I don't pretty much ever share it except for like with my friends. Um, So what would you recommend for like website stuff like that? Like, should I actually like write posts and post things like I wrote this blog and like things like that? See, I think that's going to come to you. We can get to that in a second, but I think what you need to focus more on is the perspective that you're, the perspective that you're having right now on yourself, right? It's, this is a perspective I think a lot of people have on themselves that, oh, I just graduated. I don't have any experience. And the question I pose to you is who exactly are you comparing yourself to? If you're sitting here comparing yourself to someone who's been in the marketing position that you want to get into, they've been in there for five or 10 years, of course, you're not going to have the same experience. You're not. But if you're looking at it from another perspective of, you know, that other person who is one or two years behind you in college, who's two or three years younger than you, they're looking at you and saying, I wish I was in your position, Emma. I wish I was the one having my first job in marketing. And so now they're looking up to you and looking for insight and, and anything that can help them from you, right? So switch your perspective a little bit and say, how, who can I be helpful to and how can I do that? Because once you know who you're trying to be helpful to, then then that's going to make the whole process of creating content so much easier. And a lot of the times too, people really don't care much about the end result. Like it's great when you get a job, right? It's great that you navigated to get there. But really what most people are interested and curious about is your journey and process to get to that end goal. That's Mm -hmm. really where the key is here. Like, you know, in a couple of weeks and you have a job, right? I'm going to be super excited for you and happy for you that you got that job. However, I would like, like to see what happened between now and then, right? Mm-hmm. What happened between now and in the future when Emma got that job or when Kevin got his job? Like, what was your journey? What was your process? What did you go through? That's really what's interesting, right? And then, then you get to the next phase of so when you do have the job and then you've had your first day or your first week or your first month and then your first year. Well, what was that journey? What happened within that amount of time? And what did you learn? You know, how did you grow? And those are the learning opportunities that people behind you will will gain a lot of knowledge from i love that yeah exactly like who you're comparing i love that way of looking at it the one thing i noticed emma is because you know we we chat with people at a number of different levels of like seniority and experience right and you know everyone's kind of an amateur at the end of the day right imposter syndrome is real no matter who you are you know like even tony robbins talks about having imposter syndrome before he gets on Mm -hmm. stage and he's talking to millions of people right you know you are doing a lot more than others in your position have done, right? Like, you know, I I joke about that, like under 500 connections, but, you know, we talk to folks that have like 100 connections or 200 connections. And I'm always curious to learn, like, has the importance of LinkedIn or how is LinkedIn talked about on campus? Is it talked about by your professors, by your career counselors? Like, how did you get into LinkedIn and, and creating your own content, stuff like that? Yeah, I had never like really, LinkedIn kind of stressed me out for the most part for most of college. And then I took this one business communications class and he, like the professor made us all do like create a LinkedIn and it was like part of a graded thing. Um, and we had to like make connections with people in the class. And then he just kind of like, 
and he would pull up all our profiles in class and like go through them. So it scared me into like cleaning it up and making sure. And after I kind of like cross that barrier of like, it's not scary, I'm not embarrassed to my LinkedIn, then now I'm pretty like, okay, you know. But um, I haven't, I definitely haven't gotten to like posting stuff on LinkedIn side, but yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, thank you for that professor for doing that with you guys, because not everyone is doing that. Um, and, that, and, that, and then, like you said, I mean, you went through it, right? At first, it was uncomfortable to create your profile. And then it was uncomfortable to start filling it in. And then, you know, it was uncomfortable to have somebody like pull it up in front of everyone and tear it down. So as you kind of go through these journeys, like, these are some of the things that you can be writing about, right? And, and it's uniquely your experience. It's really no one else's experience. You know, not every post you make has to be like this new groundbreaking, like, you know, concept that has never been heard before. You know, you, if you put your own spin on it, like that's going to be uniquely you. And it's, it's pretty therapeutic in a way, as I'm sure you understand as a content creator to kind of get that out. Um, I would definitely, you know, try and think of it that way as well. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely will. I haven't, I haven't thought about just like posting stuff and like becoming super active on LinkedIn in a bit. So it's going to change your world. I can tell you that much. And hopefully for the better, it's changed my world for the better. I made so many great connections, people who become really good friends of mine. I've learned a ton and it's just by networking. It's by creating those meaningful connections with people. It's, you know, you can, there are two ways I think you can look at LinkedIn, either just grow the numbers of connections and likes and call it a day right? Because it's sort of like, oh, you're a popular person and you have a lot of links, right? You have a lot of connections and people like you. Or you can look at it from another perspective that you're building actual meaningful connections with people. You, a lot of the conversations actually happen either in the comments because it's engaging content or it happens in the direct messages, right? Mm -hmm. One thing that frustrates me about people who are creating content on LinkedIn is when they just making their post post it gets some traction and it's just a one-way street because if you're coming in with the mission of I'm going to create connections with people I'm going to build up my brand well it has to be a two-way street there because if I'm creating content I'm posting it there and then all three of you come on and you give your insight or your thoughts into it or encouragement or support or whatever and I never respond to it then it's kind of like discouraging for you Right. Because then you're like, well, I'm just not going to be that supportive, supportive of her content or engaging and spending my time putting thoughtful things in there if you're never going to respond to it. And I think there's a certain time where this is feasible. Right. There are plenty of people out there who have tons of engagement on their content. I mean, they, they would be another full time job for them if they just were in their comments responding to everyone. But I think we're not coming from that perspective right now. We're coming from a perspective of you're trying to build out your network. You're trying to make meaningful connections. You're trying to get that traction and connections going. So part of your responsibility then if you are creating content is to respond to that to a certain level. And then we, when, you know, if we talk from a year from now and you have hundreds of thousands of followers and a lot of connections and you have so much engagement on your content, it's going to be a different conversation, right? You're not going to come from that perspective of, yeah, I have to engage with every single one because if you did, then you wouldn't have your job in marketing, right? If, if you were in that position. So just keep that in mind. I think it just goes back to the idea of why are you here? What are you trying to achieve? How will you achieve that? And there are ways to get there. I know it sounds probably super overwhelming when you are new to LinkedIn and you don't know where to start because I felt this way not long ago. And what I did was taking a course on like LinkedIn playbook. So it's, it's a course by Justin Welsh and it really lays out the foundation of what you should consider when you're building out your personal brand, you know, who is your target audience? What are the contents and topics specifically that you want to speak to and always making sure you align with that and who you want to have in your network, what you will do with those, building out your recommendations, like your featured section, your whole profile. So that's a recommended course I would say to anyone to start to do um, and then build it up from there. Okay. Wait, sorry, what, what's it called? I'm afraid it did. It's called a uh, LinkedIn playbook course. I believe Somewhere I should know yeah. this. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy to to send you the link later. I, I have it as well, yeah. so I can share that with you. Thank you. 
Yeah. yeah. So, um, Kevin, you had some other focus areas, right? You're trying to get into customer success, right? And your focus on having a greater LinkedIn engagement with your network as well as improving your personal brand. Yeah. So my last, my last uh, job was a customer success, but I worked for a company that was in um, the tourism industry. So <laughs> didn't get too yeah. well with pandemic, which kind of sucks. I mean, it really sucks because I like my job. I was really good at it and I love the people I worked with. So it's, um, it was kind of a bummer, but um, I just want to make sure that I'm getting the most out of LinkedIn. So tell me, what are you doing on LinkedIn right now? when you're on there? Uh, in some cases, trying to use it for information, informational interviews. In other cases, um, just like liking content or like commenting on things. But I don't post a lot of content on there. But yeah, just kind of, I kind of use it just to kind of keep in touch with people like in a professional way and then network a little bit. Mm. So I'm curious to know why you're not creating content yet. What's the holdback or what's the reasoning behind that? Um, I'm not really sure like what makes sense to put on there because there, I mean, I want to avoid anything controversial. Like I posted a link like to the wall street journal about like the latest jobs numbers um, because the jobs are starting to come back. That's good. Um, I guess it's more of like, I'm not really sure what I should be sharing on there like putting on there I, I know it gets you some engagement i'm just not I'm, I'm just not entirely sure what um i should really be putting on there mm. or like what type of content i should be sharing got it i mean yeah. I, I i've essentially worked in like the ad tech industry for like the last six years so i'm getting i'm pursuing my mba on the side that's a shirt um but and I'm going to graduate in April. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to pivot a little bit. I'd rather work like more on like the just like tech side of things. Um, so like your sales forces of the world, like you get the idea, but um, I'm not entirely sure what, I guess, what to share. Mm. Yeah. I think that's, it's not easy when you're in that space of not knowing what to do because then you'll never take the right action to do something. And I think one thing you could do is just write down what are your passions, right? What are you interested in? What do you have already some knowledge in? And obviously you worked in customer success before, so you have plenty of knowledge there and, and understanding and, and good practices and things like that. So start writing down, like, what are your interests? What are you passionate about? It doesn't necessarily have to be a particular role or industry. It can be things outside of that, right? And what part of yourself, I know you didn't want to be controversial and you don't have to be that way, but what parts about yourself can you bring to the table, right? So to give you an example of myself, I say, well, I went from focusing on my LinkedIn being about what I work in, which is fintech, education, higher education, right, in that world. And that's really how I started on my LinkedIn. But then I realized like, oh, actually a lot of my prospects are not on LinkedIn. So why am I building this up if nobody's going to see that content? And you could see like I had really low engagement, wasn't a lot of traction there. And I realized like maybe this isn't it. And then the other part of it too that I realized after speaking to a lot of different people is that unless you have your own business, there's no guarantee. And we know that because COVID happened, tons of people got laid off. We know that there's no guarantee that you will stay within that industry or within that specific company or doing what you're doing today, right? You can pivot into doing more tech sales rather than focus on customer support, right? If all you've done up until this point is, is focusing on customer success, and then all of a sudden you're like, nope, I'm actually gonna go into this other role in another industry, then it's like, okay, you've built up all of these connections in this particular area, and now you're pivoting to something completely different. It's not going to really make a lot of sense. So I was in that position, although I'm still with the same company, I realized that I actually am, it's not that I'm not passionate about my job because I am, and I love education. However, what I wanted my personal brand to be about is me. Like that's why it's called personal brand. It's about you 
right? You bring in whatever you want and it's your voice and it's your page on this platform. So I started to focus more on the things that I'm really passionate about outside of my day job and which is building a community, women in sales, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like those are the main topics. And then I bring in some of my own personal journeys in there, you know, how I grew up, where I grew up, you know, I grew up in Sweden, I grew up in foster care, like those are some personal stories, but that's what makes people look at me like I'm a real person with, with experiences that they may have had or may not have had, but it's interesting enough to be a part of that conversation. So think about what are some ways that you can bring yourself to this platform and so people can know like who's Kevin, who's Emma, what are they about, what are their passions, and that's going to be reflected on your profile, it's going to be reflected in your posts, and then obviously having like creative ways to give that content out. You can do the text space, you can do videos, you can do pictures, you can do articles, you know, plenty of ways to, to showcase your own content. Um, so that's just what I would think through is like, why, what, what do you want to get out of it? And who are you and what are you trying to get the people to know about you? Yeah. And I think like the two biggest things, I mean, inside or outside of work that I'm interested in are like travel and personal finance. So yeah, I worked in travel and I want to keep doing the customer success side of things, but, um, I realized that it's probably not going to be in the travel industry. My old company's probably not bringing any of us back. Those jobs are gone. Um, I think it's pretty mm -hmm. safe to say at this point that my old job's not coming back. And that, and I, I've accepted that. I think it's just, um, I mean, outside of work, I like to travel. I mean, literally the day I accepted the job offer for my last job, I was in Australia. Like I literally docu signed the offer letter then went on a boat and went out to the Great Barrier Reef for the day. Like it's, uh, and I was talking about one well, of my friends works for Delta and still has his job uh, in Atlanta. And I was talking to uh, my friend last night and he said that, you know, like this whole thing has been really hard, like seeing people retire, seeing people leave. But I think things will like start to normalize because everyone, <laughs> everyone travels or everyone wants to. So I think that, I mean, a big part of like, what I like to focus on is like all of these, like, like travel and personal finance are two things I've always been passionate about. I mean, this time four years ago, like I was at the Olympics in Brazil, like it's, I've had all these great experiences. It's like, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure that that's necessarily like something I talk about on LinkedIn. I feel like that's more like Instagram or whatever else, you know, like it's just, I'm not entirely sure of like where the line is between personal brand and like, you know, there's like a certain line. I'm just not sure where that is, I guess is what I'm. Well, thinking. I've heard that too. But my question is always like, says who, who made up that rule? Like that there's like this line of what you can say, what you cannot say. Like, I think this depends on who you have in your network already. Cause think about this. If I am a person who has a network of people who are extremely conservative and they're not comfortable and they're always talking about, oh, you know, this is not Facebook, this is not Instagram, I don't want to hear about all these things that are happening, right? I think this is a real thing. Most recently, right, with the Black Lives Matter movement, a lot of people were pissed off, like, don't bring that to LinkedIn, this is being political, this is that. And people were really uncomfortable with that, right? And they didn't appreciate that people were bringing that to the platform. That wasn't, that wasn't my network. I didn't see a lot of those people in my first degree network that were saying these things because I have diversified my network. I have a mix of people from different industries, different backgrounds, different races, and I wasn't actually connected with these people who said those things. So my narrative was not coming from that perspective of like, oh, I can't mix this personal and professional. Like if you went back and saw some of the posts that I've made over the past couple of weeks, you would probably cringe a little bit and be like, oh no, that is super personal. Like, why would you say that? Like I've shared stories that I got sober two years ago. That's super personal, right? And the challenges I was going through or I shared these other, I mean, they're public. So like, I'm happy to share that. What'd you say? That's no, that's great. That's, Congratulations. It's thanks. It's, it's a lot healthier <laughs> sitting here drinking beer. So that's actually, I mean, it, it, that's a good accomplishment, but 
like I, I've seen things like the stories like of people who grew up like really like dirt poor in Appalachia or Appalachia or like had a rough childhood and grew up like poor in an inner city or like mm-hmm. had had some major obstacle and like um, ended up being like really successful and like those kind of personal stories. So like I like that kind of stuff, but like it's just I don't want to, for lack of a better expression, I don't want to piss anyone off. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair which is why going back to what i said earlier write these things down here are the things that i'm comfortable sharing and you write down those topics and those ideas and then you have another list of here are things that i'm not comfortable with sharing right so then when you do create your posts and you do your drafts you just look at those lists and say well which one does this fall into is it in the category of things that i am comfortable and happy with sharing and have no problem with the public seeing or does it maybe fall into an area where i'm not so comfortable or happy with sharing and that will make your decision super easy whether you post it or not okay um one thing i i would add too because you know a lot of what both of you are saying even like watch this video after and a lot of what you guys are saying are posts Right. Like mm-hmm. I would love to hear about that story when you were in Australia and you got that call and exactly. you know, everything stopped. You were just about to get on the boat. Like people want to hear those kinds of stories and think of it yeah. this way, Kevin, like you've been to networking events before, I'm sure. Right. Like have these types of things come up in conversation when you're at networking events, right? Travel, food, you know, things that you like to do outside of work. You know, these are things that you're very comfortable with talking to people face to face when you're at an event. Actually, you probably like try to insert those things into your conversations when you're at events. You don't want to always be like, you know, work, work, work. Let's let's talk customer success all day. Like people want to see that human side of it. And it's really no different on LinkedIn. Think of LinkedIn. I steal this from Jake Dunlap all the time, but think of it as the biggest networking event all the time of all time. That's 24 seven. It's on all the time. Um, and, you know, treat it accordingly, like definitely be respectful. You know, I, I, I would avoid like very polarizing topics unless, you know, there's like a clear right and wrong, right? You know, and you're kind of on one end. And, and like Galen said, maybe you don't want those people in your network, you know, that are like totally, you know, on another side of the spectrum that you just aren't comfortable in. So there are ways that you can filter people in, but there are also ways that you can filter people out. So if you yeah. think of it that way, maybe it'll make it a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, sure. and I, I I feel like for me, the biggest thing is like, I'm an extroverted person. So like when I'm in Gainesville, I'm down at UF like for an MBA weekend, like and I'm networking with people and I'm talking to people, like it just feels a lot more natural LinkedIn, like just sending people messages and like kind of like pictures on the screen doesn't yeah. seem as like organic, I guess. Use video, You can, have you ever try, uh, thought about using video? Um, to make me look skinnier. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm kind of kidding, but no. Um, yes and no. Um, I mean, for one course I took earlier on, um, it was actually professional communication. We worked on our LinkedIn and had this whole thing that was like, my whole summary was like this whole story about like how, like I like travel and like how I got to do it, like work with travel for a living. And then obviously I had to change that once I lost my job. But, um, we talked about, I mean, we had to like do an elevator pitch. So, like we had to, um, that got graded and that was fun. It took about 85 to 90 takes, um, no exaggeration, but it, it, it's, that's okay. I was like photogenic or like videogenic person, but like, it's something I would be open to trying more of, I guess. Well, so Kevin, you're doing it right now. You're on video with us. You're doing great. You, you actually paid attention to how you come across on video and you're very present. You are looking in the camera, like you're doing all the right things, right? And you're telling stories. Like I was also hooked in when you were talking about how you're on that boat and and you were signing, you know, your, your document, like that was super interesting to me. So you're already doing it. Don't give yourself the out of saying, Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not comfortable with this yet and you may not be but you can get there you just have to figure out the ways to do that yeah and i mean like i use zoom for my mba i have zoom conferences sometimes multiple times a week but like those are my friends from school like we're on a team together and like it 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 doesn't feel like there's any pressure like and it's more relaxed it's not as 
formal, I guess. So. Well, do you feel like right now on this call that there's pressure or do you feel like it's formal? Okay, so there you go. And, and this is. But not, I don't feel like pressure, but I mean, like if I'm putting something out there where anyone can see it and it's like my face and my voice, I feel like there's more pressure to like. What's, what's the worst I, that can happen in, in your opinion? Um, actually, it's more that I just hate the sound of my head and voice. So. Well, then listen to it more. That That's my suggestion. Listen to it more. Get comfortable. I, I'm i with you, Kevin. Like, Emma, maybe you feel the same way or felt the same way. I've been there, too. And I'm still at that point. Like, just this weekend, I had to listen to a podcast that was on previously, and I've been cringing it. I'm like, I don't necessarily want to hear it. But I have to just know how that came across. If if what what my intentions were with it is actually what's out there, so I had to take the time. I had to listen to it. It took me a moment to get over myself, and I think that's where you have to like check your ego at the door and just do it. If you know, like this is my going back to like what's your purpose? What's your mission? If you know that there's a larger purpose, there's a larger mission, there's a larger reason to why you're doing this you will get over that hurdle and say, you know what, I have to do this because this is just a part of my own plan. This is what I committed to. This is what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm just going to do it, right? I know it sounds super easy. It's, it's always easier said than done. But at some point, you have to kind of check yourself and say, I ask myself this a lot. I'm saying, am I making excuses right now? Does this make sense what I'm saying? What am I afraid of to happen right now? Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Ask yourself that question. And a lot of the times when you ask yourself that question and you have a real moment, whether you say it out loud or you write it down or you say it to somebody else, you realize pretty quickly that, oh my God, this is not the end of the world. Nobody's going to remember this a year from now anyway. So just do it. And I think part of it was like until probably the last few weeks when I lost a few pounds and like my face started looking a little leaner, like it's co like kind of like conscious, like about the fact that it looks like I have like a double chin, I guess. Like, yeah. I kind of look bad, and I'm, I'm getting in better shape, like, using all this time up not working. Um, so I look better on, like, Zoom or on, like, video now. So I think that also helps. I think a lot of it was it's just kind of, like, self-conscious. I look, like, out of shape, I guess. Like, it kind of has, like, a fat face. But, I mean, I'm being honest. I think that, like, yeah. that probably had a lot to do with it. But, like, I'm starting to, like, slim down a bit and... I look better on video. So. so you feel more confident, but do you recognize that? And I can't wait to actually watch this recording to see us and listen to us because you went from saying, oh, I'm not sure that this is cut out for me or I'm feeling not so comfortable because I don't really know that I don't know where it's going to end up to then saying, well, actually, it sounds like it's more about your confidence level and you feel better now because you lost a couple of pounds and you're, you're, you're in a better place feeling good about yourself so now you're saying it's actually not that bad being on camera did i hear that right like did i get that correctly yeah and, and being on like when i was at adara being on like zoom with clients felt natural like i i was pretty good at it i didn't feel any different i think this is a big difference is not working i don't like it it kind of hits like your sense of self-worth i mean obviously like the financial side of working is nice but like I get a lot of like self worth from working. I don't like yeah. not working. Yeah. No, I get that. Emma, I'm curious to know where you sit with this. Like when you think about, cause you talked about earlier, like, Oh, what kind of content should I create? Should I create that, you know, put it on my website or LinkedIn or both. Um, how do you feel about just generally speaking, like creating content? What are you more comfortable with? than other things? Um, I, I was actually going to ask about that because I feel like my personal brand is very, like I do a lot of writing. I love writing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a lot of ideas and I write like a little lot of like hypothetical, like little ideas and things like that. But my brand overall is very like whimsical and magical and like kind of like childlike. And I like that about myself. Like I think it's unique, mm -hmm. but it isn't that serious. Like it just naturally isn't a very like serious. It's funny and like interesting, I think, but it's not serious. And so yeah. I think that's the big reason I'm afraid to put it on LinkedIn. So I'm like, people aren't going to take me that seriously, but it's not really meant to be taken seriously. But LinkedIn is a very like 
Instagram, it's really easy to do that. But like LinkedIn mm-hmm. is supposed to be serious. So I think that's kind said of who. I don't know, just like I'm going back to the same that. thing. Like, <laughs> who said that to you? Like, can can you please follow Sarah Brazier? I was Sarah just thinking Brazier. the same. Really? Yep. What's it? How is it spelled? And, uh, it's um, Sarah it S A R A H. Yeah, and then Brazier is B R A Z I E R. Okay. Um, there's plenty of other people like Sarah. I'm not just singling her out, but okay. please watch her content and then. Let us know how you feel about LinkedIn being a place to be serious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, guys, like there is some w- there is someone or something out there for both of you, right? Yeah. There are brands that are whimsical, that are playful, that don't want the serious, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, there are brands that are still hiring in the travel space that care about personal finance, right? You can look into uh, Trip Actions. Trip Actions, they're hiring for sales. I know that. And they are hurting from the pandemic, but they also know that they've created something and they just raised a whole bunch of money and they want to double down and they're hiring aggressively. Right. I mean, on the, on the kind of more whimsical, like look up like B2C apps, you know, look up like storytelling apps there. There's one uh, called sweet blackberry. I don't want to butcher the name, but there are apps that focus on telling stories that are doing very well in this time that, would look at your brand that's whimsical and playful. And you mentioned even earlier, like, you know, do I be funny? You know, there are things, do I be myself? It's like, yes, please. We want to see more of that. And for the right brands that see that, they're going to go for that. And they're going to ignore this, the, you know, the serious stuff. Right. Um, And Kevin, I didn't notice anything of what you said about overweight or chin or this or that when you were talking and when you were expressing yourself, none of that came across, right? Like, all of that are like barriers that we put in front of ourselves. I mean, look, look at my beard right now, right? Like I had, you know, it's COVID, man. Like (laughs) not to mention that we all have the excuse of kind of being home all the time. I mean, granted, I'll I'll probably get a haircut later today, but cut yourself some slack. Like you don't have to be like, you know, suit and tie kind of buttoned up all the time to be yourself. Um, You'll find someone that can relate to you. Exactly. Yep. The other thing too, I wanted to, touch base on and I know we have about 10 minutes left or so is do a self audit of a lot of different things in your life like I've talked about this before I posted about it Um, and when I say do a self audit I mean like look start with your network on LinkedIn be intentional of who you bring into your network like think about having that diverse perspective of voices backgrounds um, you know, age, like there's so many different things you can think about when you think about diversity and inclusion. It's like, I think a lot of people get stuck on this thinking that, oh, you're talking about diversity and inclusion. It's all about minorities. It's not just all about minorities. It's also about gender. It's about age. It's about different thoughts and feelings that people have, different backgrounds. There's so much in there that that is under the umbrella for me with diversity and inclusion. So think about that when you build out your network, because I, I think the benefit that I have from having a diverse network is that I get so many different voices and opinions and feelings and thoughts and ages in there. And it's super interesting because that really makes me think about different perspectives and understanding people better, right? And I think when you're in sales and you're in marketing, like that's the type of influence that you want to have. And if you have that influence, then you, I think, can have a better impact on other people. So think about that and be intentional when you are building out your network, because when we talk in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you know, you're going to have so many more connections. And if you've been intentional with who you bring into your network and who you engage with, that's going to help you at the end of the day, become an even better person, right? Not just in your profession, but overall as a human being. Um, So self audit to me is doing that with your network, but also self audit, like where are you spending your time? Like going back to, we talked about metrics and goals earlier, think about what are those goals, what are those metrics and, and being very clear with them and consistent with them. But it gets to a point where I was very recently and I just posted about it too, saying like, I, I'm at the point where I need to learn to say no to things. And I go back to understanding, like, how do I guard my time? How do I become more intentional with my priorities and making sure that the things I'm spending my time on are leading to the desired outcome? 
So if you know what your goals are, you know what your metrics are, you know what your intention and what you want the outcome to be, that's going to make everything so much more clearer because you're in a place of looking for a job, building out your personal brand, surviving right now in the economy that we're in, right? That, that, that's a lot. And then you have this hurricane going on and then we have COVID and then we have Black Lives Matter movement, all of those things to take into consideration and, and dealing with the feelings that comes with all of that. So make sure you just guard yourself, your time, your priorities in that way. And sometimes I think doing that type of self audit can be extremely helpful long-term. Um, what do you think like for me, like as a college graduate doing what I'm doing, trying to figure it out, what is a good goal, like a fair achievable, achievable goal that I should have in like a month or like in two months, would you say? Or for what in particular? Um, just like for like my career, I guess, like for the job search, even if I like don't get like find a job in a month, just like a metric to have, like, would you say besides like, I mean, you said connections, but is there any other thing I should be like, kind of like watching and like aiming for? So with the, with the whole job search, and we talked about this in the beginning of the call was that. I don't think just filling out the applications is going to cut it. I don't think that's like the best way to go about it at all right now because there's so much competition. I think a lot of your time should be spent on doing the research on the companies that you're going to sort of build a case, make a case for yourself, bring that creative part of your self to the application itself. And if you have, like what I've heard working for other people is that they play the long game. And this is, this is all about playing the long game where you make the connections with people. The reason why I've been able to have some really good mentors in my life for the past couple of months is that I didn't just show up one day, let's say Amy Volas, another really good person that I recommend both of you to follow. She's my mentor, but that didn't just happen one day because I just randomly asked her like, hey, Amy, I think you're great. Can you be my mentor? That's not at all what happened and that's not the way to go about it. I, I played the long game and I attended her webinars. I go to Thursday night sales every week, stay up super late because I'm five hours ahead of everybody else, which is another day, another story. But I did these little things throughout the time for a couple of weeks and then she saw me investing in myself and being very serious about my own growth and exactly what I'm looking for and, and, I'm not looking for a job. I'm not reaching out to her because I want a job. I'm reaching out because she's been to places where I want to go. And so that was my purpose. So then after a couple of weeks, I was able to ask her and it took her like one second to say yes. It wasn't even she, like she didn't even think about it because she had already thought about that. She already knew like, yeah, this is somebody I want to help, this is somebody I want in my life. And so play the long game, you know, take your job search super serious and think about not just, oh, I'm going to submit this application, but like, who, who do you know who can make you an introduction? Or when you do find a particular role that you're interested in, how can you build a case for yourself? Like, what can you bring to the table? What can you do for them? It's not just like, hey, am I know you have this job opening. I'm super interested in it. I would love to have some time to talk to you about this. That's like, yeah, that's what all the other thousand applicants said as well. I don't have that much time. So why should I invest 30 or 20 minutes with you in particular, mm -hmm. right? Like be specific, just as you were specific coming into this one today saying, you know, I am some, like I took notes of what, what you both were interested in. And I know you're very specific of saying like, I'm a recent college grad looking for an entry level in marketing and I want to level up my job search. Super specific. And Kevin's was like, I'm coming from customer success. I want help using LinkedIn to engage with my network and I want to learn how to improve my personal brand, right? So like be specific and then don't make it about you, make it about them, you know? So going back to Amy Volas, she's an amazing person that you should follow and, and try to connect with because her post is all about this. Like, what is it that, that the employers would care about when you're reaching out to a recruiter? What is it that you should be focusing on? She has this amazing scorecard that she always uh, talks about because it's helping people when they are looking for a job to really narrow down on what the important aspects are of that job search. So she's a really, really good person for you to connect with. There are tons of other people. I 
built during this whole pandemic, I built this uh, community for sales, marketing, and RevOps professionals. Uh, Hatem, you're, you're in it, so you know, um, and your whole team. So, right, that's a space, a Slack channel right now. We also are on, have a website and, and, and doing that, but that's a space where you can get a lot of resources. We have job postings there every day. I mean, Hatem, you know, you can probably share your experience so far. I can tell you all about it because I was part yeah. of creating it, but I want to maybe well, you could share I mean, your experience. That's, some, that's something that I think is, so both Galem and Jared. So I had, I've known Jared for a uh, few months. I actually met him in the beginning of this year through another friend. And, um, you know, he had come to us and was, you know, he, he was on the job hunt and he mm -hmm. was looking for an account executive role. And he knew that he wanted to work for a very strong leader. Uh, but he was having trouble breaking through just like everyone else, right? Like yep. some of them, they weren't connecting. Some of them, it just wasn't the right fit. They weren't really hiring, et cetera, et cetera. So Jared, just like any great kind of like go-getter was like, you know, screw this, right? Like the space is missing a place where people can come and, you know, post COVID kind of jump in and really care about each other and help each other, you know, grow into their career. And he just started it. Right. It was just like off of a whim. He started it. He started posting every single day. He started becoming more and more active. And all of a sudden he started attracting people to him. And then Gay, I don't know, I, at least this is what I see as the story. Galen got involved. Uh, well, actually, other... so Jared and I co-founded Rev Genius. It right. start, we came together and we came together because of the frustration around all of the events that are out there in the world right now. And it just started with one simple thing of, of creating a document for sales professionals to get access to all of these different events that we were attending. Cause I had people coming to me being like, Oh, I know you're attending so many webinars. Like, how do you find them? Where are they? And so Jared and I started talking about this and, and we created this event page really, or an Excel spreadsheet of it, shared it with a couple of people. And then we started a group on LinkedIn, but then the app actually crashed way too many times throughout the day because there were so many people out there. The engagement was, crazy like it was such a good engagement with everyone so then yeah. we were like all right well what else can we do and then we moved over to slack and then that's how the community was created uh, a couple of months ago yeah. now and and now we have you know almost four thousand members which is absolutely insane yeah. in like two months two and a half months so that's how it was started but we have all these people in this space looking for similar things that you are looking for, looking for a job, looking to level up within their current roles, uh, looking to make better connections, making friends, um, having fun. Like we have so much going on. We have round tables every single week. We have a couple ones coming out for marketing specifically. We have every day of the week we have for sale. So like we have this space a group a community that are allowing all these three different types of professionals to come together into one space and really learn from each other this is a super unique place because even when you work Kevin you probably know working in, a, in an organization previously that every department is sort of sitting in their own little space right there's not always that great collaboration between sales marketing rev ops customer success and that's what we wanted to create here. So that's what Rev Genius is for. So I'm happy to send you both an invite to check out the community, get those resources. Um, Amy Volus is in there too, and a couple of other great people. So a really good way for you to yeah. connect with others. Cool. Actually, again, I, well, not the community, just like the homepage for it right now. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely suggest you guys checking it out, jumping in there. There's a number of different channels. Yep. Um, and and they, they do a good job of kind of like, you know, guiding you into the right places. And this is like a whole nother conversation that we can have Yalem and obviously we'd love to have you back in here. I know that we're at time right now, but yeah. you know, for me, like the, the best part of it is that now like Galem and Jared and everyone really is surrounded by all of these leaders. Right. And we're starting to exactly. attract people in. Right. And it yep. wasn't like, you know, ask, ask, ask. It was really like give, 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 give. And now, you know, Exactly. Like, it's actually the, re the, the how I found out uh, about Galem. Yeah, it's how I came across a lot of different people is through communities like that. And, you know, you guys can be a part of it too. So I yeah. love that, Galem. Thank you so much. Um, there's so much yeah. more we can talk about. Emma and Kevin, thank you guys for jumping in. I know it's a little bit out of your comfort zone, but again, every day, let's kind of do something that makes us better and really appreciate you guys.
Yeah, thank you for having me. And you both, Emma and Kevin, had really good questions. I see no reason for you not to engage on LinkedIn. Um, reach out to me after this. I'll invite you both to Rev Genius. We'll continue this conversation. I have tons of resources for you that I will send over. So can't wait to see your growth on LinkedIn just explode. Really excited about it. Thank you so uh, much for hopping on. You had a lot of really great things to say. And I know you're probably really busy. You're all very busy. So thank you very much. Well, I, I make time for this. This is a lot of fun to me. And I just want to see you grow into your roles and, and expanding on what you already know. It's super exciting to watch that. This is, yeah, just a, um, and on that, yeah, this is super helpful. And I really appreciate it. I'm sure you're busy. I know it's, I guess, if you're in, you're in London, right? Yes, I am. It's four o'clock. Yeah, it's getting towards the end of the day for you, so I know. Um, oh, my day doesn't there, but... end for another eight hours, so we're all good. I'll catch up with both of you um, on Slack and LinkedIn. I'm here, so whatever I can help you with, I'm happy to do. I always make time for people like this. Appreciate you, Gail. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye.